the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power for it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley that blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power it will never lose its power well good morning everyone i guess you realize we're going to talk about the power of the blood this morning my name is d canup and i'm a partner in the ministry called power and unity and today is March, no, not March, it's May 17th, 2022. And so this morning we're going to talk about the power of this almighty blood um, that will never lose its power, never lose its power. It's, it's, it can't, it's not the blood of any human being or animal or anything else created, but the blood of Jesus is the only one that has that healing, that power to hold and protect and to keep you into the day of salvation. So I'm going to start out by asking you a question and I don't know about you, but I know there's been many times when I first became a Christian that I would be in prayer and I would be asking the Lord, you know, Lord, how can his blood be pure? You know, Mary might have been a virgin, but she was still born of two, two adults, two, two human beings, and their blood was tainted since the Garden of Eden. So how can this happen? And I want to tell you of a burnt vision he gave to me one day, and I was, I was meditating, and all of a sudden I could literally see the conversion. I could see the conception. I could see the Father as he overshadowed Mary. He cleansed her blood as the Holy Spirit put the seed of Jesus in her womb. That, my friend, was the total Trinity all at the conception of Jesus Christ. And that's what he showed me that day. He showed me <laughs> how the blood could be pure and holy and how he could become the supreme sacrifice for all mankind. It was a, an amazing and a supernatural event. <laughs> Her be, Mary, Mary was overshadowed by Father, and the whole, his spirit put the seed of Jesus in her womb. This is how Jesus could be all man, yet all God. I know when, I, these are just things I thought about, and he showed me this. He showed me how he would, when he was born, he walked among us, showing us the love of the Father. Even at the age of 12, he was astounding the, the scribes as he, as he taught them from the scriptures. <laughs> Remember that time that his parents had left to go back home and they couldn't find him and they had to go back to Jerusalem? Hey, they found him in the, in the, in the uh, synagogue teaching. <laughs> and he said, do you not know I have to be about my father's business? All these kind of things Mary pondered in her heart. But even as a child, if he fell, he scraped his knee, it hurt. He had to eat. He had to sleep. He, had, he got thirsty. This was the man, the old man. But then he was the, the all God also where when they tried to kill him because he, they were disturbing what, what the, the uh, priests of that day were teaching, you know, their holiness, and they were giving him, they were, he was talking about a whole new kingdom, a whole new God, you know, acting like he was God himself, and they wanted to kill him. So anyway, he would walk through the midst of them, and they'd look around and shake, where did he go? How did he get past us? Or when the time when he walked through the door, didn't open it, just walked through the door to meet the disciples and talk to them. And he did again when, when Thomas came to the room. 
and he showed Thomas his hands and his side where he had, it was him, he had been pierced. This was the amazing all God. So he's all God and he's all man. The magnitude of the blood he shed that day is astounding. And I don't know about you, but I ask the question sometimes, which drop of blood began to reverse the curse? Was the first drop of blood when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was praying with such agony that the Bible says his sweat became as drops of blood? And this has been proven in the natural, it can happen. Was that the first drop that began to reverse the curse? Or could it have been Or could it have been when they came to the garden and they, with clubs and with, with lanterns and with swords, like, I don't know, garrison can be 300 to 600 people. And we're not talking guard, all guards, we're talking some, you know, priests and, and uh, the Levites and all those that it came, it came up right along with them. And he said, who, listen to this, whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, I am he. And guess what happened? They all fell down to the ground. Just the power of his name. He said, I am he. <laughs> and I don't know what would give them the stamina to come back up, but they did. And how they bound his wrist, I don't know, and drug him through the streets. Could it have been his feet got scraped and was bleeding, his wrists were bleeding, could it have been that blood? Could it have been that blood? Or could it have been when they slapped him and blood began to pour out of his mouth for answering the high priest the way he did? Or could it have been when they placed, crushed that crown of thorns on his head and he began to bleed down the side of his face? Could it have been that drop? Could it have been the drops of blood that came from that whip that pow, hit him on the back and pulled his flesh loose? Could it have been that drop? Or could it have been the drops that came down when they nailed him to the cross, even before they stood the cross up? I saw it streaming down in that vision that day. As it touched the ground, it reversed the curse. Either way, the first drop of blood is what changed everything that day. Now I want us to focus on the power of his, what happened that day when he took our transgressions and our iniquities away. He didn't leave anything. He didn't leave just a little bit out there for us to have to worry with. He took it all. He took it all, for it says in, in Isaiah, he bore our griefs and our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken of God and submit, smit, smitten and stick, uh, stricken of God. But he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And I just couldn't let that go. I had to look up what iniquities meant and what uh, transgressions meant. And transgressions was number, let me see. It was number 5771 in Strong's Concordance, spelled P-A-S-H-A, or P-E-S-H-A. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it meant revolt, rebellion, and, and sin. In other words, it was this outward rebellion against God's commandments, statutes, and laws. And then we look up the word iniquity, which is taken from number 5771 out of Strong's Concordance. And it refers back to 5758, which means immoral, root of perversion, a fault. And this perversity means behaving in an unreasonable, unacceptable, improper way, perverted thinking. This is the inward sin. That God took so he didn't just cleanse us from the outside but he cleansed us to from the core of our heart out 
so he took all the sin away. And then the chastisement of our peace was upon him, the, 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 the correction that he, get, he took upon himself to bring us the peace of God. His peace he leaves with us, he said, and his joy would fill our heart, he said. So that tells us of the power of the conversion that happened that day. The things and the power, I'm gonna just name a few that the power of the blood does. It gives us an eternal blood covering covenant with God and when we do communion we remember that covenant we remember that he took away all our sins didn't leave part he took away all our transgressions and all our iniquities and our chastisement was upon him for our peace he did it all he did it all he did it all we have the promise of that eternal covenant. We have the promise of eternal protection, uh, the protection from every direction, no matter whether what valley or fire we're walking through, we are protected. He said, I go before you and I guard your back from the vicious attack. And that we're transformed into a new creature, all, all, old things have passed away behold all things have become new praise be unto god and as another verse says it there is now no condemnation in those who serve jesus christ so he took it all away now all have sinned and come short of the glory of god and the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ who hung on that cross for you and me praise be unto god praise be unto god Praise be unto God. <laughs> Transformed by the power of the blood from a earthen vessel to a spiritual vessel that now lives in an earthen vessel. Yes, and you say, well, how, like, how can that be? Well, I don't know how that can be, it, but it's the power of the blood that transformed us. In, in uh, John 17, it says that Jesus said, I don't wish you take them out of the world, but that you would keep them with your amazing grace and your mercy in this world. For they are no longer of this world, just like I am no longer of this world. So what does that say? That says to me that I am a spiritual being now in an earthen vessel. This earthen vessel is what holds me here and gives me that power. And now we have that anointing because he lives in here. His DNA is our DNA now. And it is his anointing, his power, his authority, his righteousness, his holiness that abides within us. It is the Holy Spirit that speaks through us. We hear with our ear and we speak through our mouth the wonders of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is an eternal covering from every storm and every fire. It is a power and authority over every demon of hell and every demonic thing, evil thing that would come against us in this life. Power and authority over it, over the scorpions and the snakes of this life. And he, with every temptation, he made the way to escape amazing grace and eternal mercy comes because of the blood of Christ. We are joined back to the Father. He says, I join you back to my Father. Now you can go straight into the throne room of God, worshiping, praising, singing psalms, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land, serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing, know ye that the Lord, he is God, and it is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name for his Mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. His truth endureth to all generations. And in another place, he says that we do not war with flesh 
Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war in the flesh, for our weapons are not carnal, but they're mighty in God, to pulling down every stronghold, bringing every thought, every, uh, every argument that would come against the, the knowledge of God, and, and bringing every, uh, kind of misquoted that one, but every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. He says, I give you my whole armor from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. So we don't fight against flesh and blood anymore. We fight against, uh, this is spiritual battles that we fight. There, he says, for you do not fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the, the, the rulers of darkness of this age, against the, the spiritual host of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in that evil day, and doing all to stand, stand girded about your waist with truth, putting on the breastplate of righteousness, which is Christ, and picking up the shield of faith, which will quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. Put on the helmet of the salvation to protect your mind and your, your, your soul, and picking up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Catch these nuggets that He gives to us and being ever watchful with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. He gives us all of this through his blood. Praise be unto God forevermore. We have a brand new family, family of God that goes all over this world. We're never alone. Praise God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit abides in here. But we're never alone for God has people everywhere. And we're sealed unto that day of redemption. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Praise be unto God. Wow, this took a turn. A lot of that wasn't even in my notes. But anyway, I want to end by giving you another poem and all the stuff we kind of talked about here. And there's many ways we could have went about this, but this Jesus said, this is what I want you to tell him. I want you to tell him this in your way as I talk through you. But this is a poem he gave me one day, all about the same thing we just talked about. It says, the power of the blood shed that day, its stains can never be washed away. Or you may reach out and you may decide you want the, the, the uh, earth, the world, and its goods, instead of wanting Jesus Christ and his covering. But the stains will never be washed away. It covers you from your head to your feet, making in him your life complete. He left heaven's throne, heavenly throne, came to earth for our sins to atone. The blood that ran down the cross was for every person who was lost. It cleanses to the core of the soul. Age didn't matter, young or old. The moment the first drop touched the ground, it reversed the curse and turned it around. Now salvation has come through the power of God's Son. Now into the throne room we can come. The blood opened the door to everyone. Color, creed, where you were raised, rich, poor, young and old, it doesn't matter. Everyone. Red, white, blue, black, color, doesn't matter to him. We are his children. The price we pay is to accept Christ today. Enter into the joys of the Lord for all your sins he did bore. Rejoice, O fallen man. Jesus put you back in God's hand. <laughs> now all heaven's treasure, all of heaven's treasures belong to you. By crushing Satan's plans, I made you brand new. For there is now no condemnation in him. His blood washed away all sin. <laughs> the power of the cross says, come all who are lost. This is God. I am God's love sent from above hung on the cross and died to bring you back to God's side. My blood I shed so that we can be wed. I am now your strength and hiding place while for truth you run your race. Praise be unto God forevermore. The cross, a symbol of his amazing grace, shedding his blood, in him we now have a place. From the beating for our healings, Love held him to the cross from generation for generations for all who were lost. Remember what we quoted a while ago? 
that the mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations who is the truth Jesus said in John 14 I am the truth the way and the light I am all way truth and life he is the truth for all generations who are lost generations and time come and go but there is one thing we know the power of Christ's blood still flows reaching to the highest mountain to the valley low come kneel today allow him to take your sins away he is waiting with outstretched arms to secure you from all earth's harm praise be unto God forevermore I want to end this segment by just giving you a dream that I had the other day. In this dream, or let me back up just a little bit. My husband and I have been going through some, um, what I call a pretty tre treacherous time. Um, and it affected both of us in our physical bodies and in our, our spirit. Um, it, it just affected us. It doesn't matter what it was, the fact remains. It was an attack. It was an attack from the enemy. and. So when I went, I laid a bit down one night and I began to, this was like Sunday actually, and I began to dream and I dreamed I was in this fierce, the fiercest storm that I can even imagine because the winds, I don't care where I turned my face, the wind was blowing fiercely into my face. It was blowing in every direction. The, the rain that was in, in the wind was just slapping me in the face, saturating my body. I was looking here and there, running here and there, trying to find a place to hide. And I couldn't find anything. It was just slapping me in every direction. And then I stopped in my track, stopped dead in my track in this dream. And I said, wait a minute. I have the blood applied from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. This storm cannot touch me. And I promise you that second the storm stopped and I woke up. And my body and my mind and my spirit has been on a mend ever since. So the blood is so powerful. So if you're in a storm, if you're in a parched and dry land, or if a storm is hitting you in every direction, or the mountain is, seems too high to climb, or the valley seems too low to bear, or the river seems too wide to cross, or the fire seems too hot to go through. Remember, stop in your tracks and remember the blood of Christ. So I ask you today, if you haven't already, if you just bow your knee and say, Lord, forgive me. And he will come in like a rushing mighty wind and he will secure your soul for eternity god bless you all and i hope you receive this into your spirit as much as i enjoy talking about the precious holy powerful blood of jesus that's anoint us for service it is his anointing his blood his love his joy his peace, his power, his authority, his righteousness, his holiness. We are wed. We are now wed to this Christ who died to set us free. So as I may, I ask you to bow your knee again and ask forgiveness for those sins and watch that weight lift off for you. And you feel light as a feather. I know that's what happened to me. I felt like a 2,000 pound weight had been lifted and I felt light as a feather. God is so good. He sent Jesus, his love, he sent from above. God bless you all.